tell me a bit about your game. Um, I, I'd, I'd say I'm like a, if I break 100, good day. Cool, okay. Get more consistent. Yep. But also just kind of improve the mechanic. Like, I seem to get golf in double lane, and I feel like it's something. I'm, just, I'm swinging with something wrong. Like, okay, okay. Yes, like, especially when I hit a divot, I feel it kind of. Hmm. Okay. Um, I guess also I had another question about grip. Yeah. Like, growing up, I was always taught to take golf, but I know it's pretty unconventional. Like, Mm -hmm. but I, I don't know. Do you have any, uh, it's kind of like you know it, it's up to you it, more importantly is how the glove goes on the club so take your glove hand grip yeah. okay and don't let go i'm going to move you okay so we want to try and get this more in the fingers down this way so if i, I held see. it up like that yeah. we want the fingers to go on the shaft at 90 degrees i see all right so then from there the thumb hangs out longer and when you bring it down, you'll notice that it's arched more. That's a very, very good grip. Now, how do you, how would you put that on comfortably? Honestly, uh, I guess something like this. Thumb hat, the glove thumb stays on top, but you're okay. holding it great. I, I mean, changing it's not going to all of a sudden make you shoot 80. Sure. Right? Yeah. It's more about, like, if it's in a bad way, we can't leverage the club. Yeah. But if the glove hand's on the right way, it doesn't really matter how this goes on. I mean, lots of tour players have 10-finger grips. Sure. So it's not a bad thing. And so when you're playing, do you find that it's like a contact thing or you hit the ball somewhat solid, it just curves kind of not where you want it to? Yeah, I, I, I hit it, definitely hit it solid, but like since the hook and slides the hook. Okay. When it does too, not a lot of people get used to it. Yep, Especially okay. Especially off the tee, like uh, irons and shorter games. I guess there's less variability when you're getting closer to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of the time I'm kind of hitting out of the trees, trying to thread the path. Yeah, okay. Path, okay. Well, let's hit some, see how it looks. See an eight Red shirt. Okay. So, other than the grip, which I'll watch for today. Um, I think that the best way to find the grip is to grip the club when the shaft's straight up and down. Because if the, the club's on the ground, it influences us to kind of grab it more in the palm. So if we grip it up there, it's a little better. But um, there's a couple things that I want to look at in your swing. So come on over here. First piece of the puzzle um, is, I mean, you're tall, sure. but you, you hunch over a lot. So we lose a lot of the tall leverage that you can create. I see. Okay. All right, so I want to feel as though your legs are longer at setup because, I mean, you make a pretty decent turn, right? You rotate pretty well, but as you swing through into the finish here, you're still too short, like your knees are bent and you I haven't see. stood up all the way. Okay. And so what we what happens is if we don't get to stand up, we don't, can, we don't finish our turn sure. and the club and the arms start to kind of swing around us, yeah. which is why you finish kind of low and bent, but your arms are way up in the sky. I see. So the, the big piece of the puzzle today is gonna to be feeling, um, getting taller at setup, feeling as tall as you can be in your finish. But we're gonna try and get the arms to kind of swing behind your body pivot, behind your turning toward the target. Sure. Because from here, the arms come down a little too fast relative to your body move. Mm -hmm. 
So let me jump in here and kind of show you some okay. things and what I mean. First piece is going to be at setup, just trying to feel as though that you can straighten your legs a little bit, right? It almost feels like someone's pulling you up from here and just to stand a little taller, <clears throat> okay? Your back swing, I think, is fine. <clears throat> I think that when you turn back, you've got lots of rotation, you've got lots of turn, the club gets high, all that stuff's great. But from here, I want you to try to feel as though that you are getting your body forward and tall before your arms start to pass your body. And so this is kind of like, you know, lagging the arms behind my body turn. But if the arms are kind of coming down and they're passing my body, like if this is set up, right, and my arms come through, set up and swing all the way around me, that's where the club face can get not only offline, so we have draws and fades, but sometimes we hit the ground, sometimes we don't, right? So I want it to feel like today that like we'll talk about your glove, that when you swing your glove back behind the middle of your body, I want you to feel as though that the glove stays on the left side of your body as you turn through, and it only catches up here, All right? So if I faced you, my, my glove and my hands are on the left side of my middle until I get tall into the finish. But if the hands pass the body like this, the club's not going down as much, and it's like the club face can turn all over the place, right? It's like turning the steering wheel too much. So I think that, you know, going through the, the, the basic stuff at the beginning here with get the grip on there correctly, so fingers go around the shaft at 90 degrees, you'll notice that puts your thumb longer, like you're hitchhiking, rather than having the thumb short, like in the middle of your hand, like that, right? So long like this, and then from there, taller at setup, swing back taller at the finish and if you can feel as though that you know the, the the getting to the finish the getting you turned all the way through like that is what leads the arms and club on the way through you're going to find that it's going to be first easier on you but second the club's going to be in the same place all the time so you know consistency is not really something that we can have in golf because it's different all the time but you can have a more predictable strike to know that hey like this ball is either to go straight to the left straight or curve to the right or it's going to start to the right and curve to the left. Like we're always going to miss it on two sides of the target. I just don't want it to curve both ways. That's the big problem. So jump into a, a setup here. Okay, so set up to your shot. Uh, so let's work on the grip first. Yeah, fingers on 90, thumb ends up extending really long. There we go. It's going to feel a little different today. Okay, so take it up to the top of your swing and hold it up there. Okay, not bad. A little more chest turn. turn your, yeah, good. Okay, so let's start again. Keep your eyes on the target. Or on the ball, sorry. Big turn all the way up. Okay, so I want you to get all the way through into your finish. Make it nice and slow. All the way into your finish. Keep going, keep going. Good. You're keeping the club lag behind you. That's pretty good. So if I had a line just outside my front foot, I want to feel as though that when I get to the top of my backswing, the next thing is getting my body up against this wall. Get the thighs up against the wall, hips up against the wall, chest square to the wall, right? That's the end of my finish position, getting like turned and square to my target, okay? So let's kick the ball away and make some fa faster practice swings. Okay, a little taller with the legs. Keep going, taller. Good, okay. And through. Not bad, one more time. All the way up and through and hold it there. Okay, so longer with the legs, stand up nice and tall, push forward more, good. And now put your arms back down here in front of you. Lengthen them out. There we go. So the role of the arms is to keep the grip away from you, right? So my arms are always trying to straighten out in my swing. But if I use my arms to start swinging around my chest like that, that's where they start to bend, right? So when you take it up to the top of your swing as a lefty, we're looking for a full turn of you in order to keep this thing longer. And then the downswing is about trying to get you turned and tall up against the wall. Like my legs are straight, right? My belt is as high as I can get it from the ground. I'm really extended up. I'm almost this way. I'm trying to get so tall. Okay. So tall at setup, tall at the end, and we'll try and make the pieces in the middle work well today. Good. 
Now, the one thing you'll notice is that when, if I'm leading with my body all the way to here, my arms will finish a little bit more like lower rather than up here. The only way that the hands get up there in the swing is when the golfer stands up really fast and it launches the arms up there. But I don't want you to use the muscles in your arms to put the club up here because that's, that's pulling it away from the ground. We only want the arms to go down into the ground, long from here, right? Pushes into the ground and then it stops. So your hands might feel like they finish lower when you get tall up against that wall today. Okay, so super tall at setup. Different, good job. One more time. Good. Okay, let's hit a couple. So in order to max out the length of the club, try holding it all the way to the end. I see. Okay. okay, and hinge it up for me in front. Yeah. Okay. So the club actually doesn't touch there. It fits there, now on the fingers. Good. And now when it rolls over, you'll notice that none of that actually touched the rubber. Right. I see. So loosen just a touch. There we go. Now squeeze it. So that's your proper grip. Club face is straight. We've got an arch or a bend here in the wrist. Right? And the club, like if there's one pad of your hand and another pad of your hand, those yeah. both sit on the top of the grip. I see. Not this way where it's in there. Because you'll notice that if I hold the club along, you know, the middle of my palm like that, when I grip it, see how my then, thumb? Yeah. Right? But if I grip it here where it's all around the pinky, all around those fingers, yeah. now I have the hitchhiker thumb. I see. Okay. Taller with the legs. Good. A little longer with the legs, good. Okay, so if there might be the feeling that if you stand up tall at setup and you get the legs longer, that you can't get down to the ball. Yeah, I feel further. Yeah, okay. So if we're setting up like this and the knees are really bent, that's going to encourage you to start pulling the club inward, right? Inward this way. So now it's getting closer to me, the opposite of what I talked about what the arms are supposed to do, right? And they get closer to you. And then as you stand, that's helping you get the arms way up here. So I want it to feel like what you're doing is you're standing tall with the legs, really getting far from the ground. And the only thing that I want you to do with your arms is to put the club into the ground. I don't want you to feel like you're using your arms to swing toward the target because by swinging them toward the target, they end up passing me. And that's actually a shortening thing. So there it's going to miss the ground again. So if I were to isolate just what the arms do in the swing, it's like chopping wood. They go up, they go down. That's it, right? So if I didn't turn my body, that's a perfect motion with my arms, okay? But the second that I turn my body, right, now I go up, if I didn't turn my body from here, there it is. Great motion with the arms. But as I turn my body toward the target, right, notice how I start hitting more down and more forward. Okay. So the swing is like a, it's like a combo of two different things in order to create this golf club coming down on this angled line, right? My arms go up and down as my body turns round and round. So you can imagine if you had a, like a merry-go-round and a Ferris wheel, if you put them together, you get the tilt the wheel, you get the angle, right? So I want it to feel like your arms from the top of the swing are only going down to reach the ball, but as you get your body up to the wall, the arms end up going that way. But if we use our energy to our arms and push the club in the direction of the target, you're always gonna hit the top of the ball, okay? 
So one of the exercises we can do, and we can start with this now because it's a pretty good one, is setting up with the ball in front of your front toe, in front of your right foot, left foot goes back like this, okay? And the idea here is to swing back and swing through and not lose your balance. But if, like, the whole point of this is to feel as though that the arms can swing down to reach down there and hit, that, hit the ground and hit the ball. But if it's set up like this, which you never will, you're going to, there's not enough room for the arms to get long. It's going to dig into the ground. So show me a setup like that. Yeah, front foot, uh, back foot back. That's right, as far as it can go. Okay. Good. Okay. And then just arms. Just feel like you swing your arms all the way down and reach down for that ball. Not bad. Good job. Okay, try and stick your finish. Nice. And so this gives the feeling that once we get into a better position where you're taller and the grip's on there correctly, right? Now you can feel like you actually reach down with your arms to get it instead of being low that they're going to get there anyway, right? The, the lengthening of the arms to reach down to the ball is like a power source, right? Like we create angles to create leverage and throwing those all away, that's speed. Right? Our angles turn into straight. There's some speed there. And so that's when, you know, feeling as though that we can get that club all the way down to the ground is, is a big power thing. But it's going to help hit the ball higher and straighter at the same time. Okay. So let's go like five shots in that one foot balance position. Stand a little farther from it. There you go. Good job. Okay, two more. Okay. okay, so now let's go back to your normal stance uh, that has legs longer. All right, that's, that's our fix with our setup. Okay, and I want you to feel like you really reach down with your arms to get the club into the ground on this one as you stand up nice and tall into your finish. All right, one more time. Okay, so yeah, we wanna try and find a way to get this shoulder higher in your follow through. Because if this leg stays bent and you stay down, this one's going to stay too low. And I want it to feel like you're getting taller, right? My whole, that's my right side, it's your left side, is straight up and down, right? My, my front leg being your right leg, it's going to be as tall as it can be. So everything has to get tall into the finish in order to get the club through. So it happens before you swing your arms. It happens before the arms go into a finish. Good. One more time. So hands lower, body taller. It'll feel like a shorter follow through today. Okay. Hands still lower. Your hands will finish somewhere by your stomach down here, right? They don't go back up again. They only stay down. You push them down to the ground. Okay. One more time. Thank you. 
So I want you to stand with your body as tall as you can stand with your torso, but I'm going to put this here so that your arms and club don't get to it. All right? I want to stop before here. Don't hit into it. All right? Stand tall all the way to the end. Tall. Good. Yeah, good. Good. One more time. Same thing. Full speed. Okay, hold it there. Tall, tall, tall. Lean back. There. So here's the finish. All right? I'm tall as I can get, right? But my arms are down here. But if you go this way and you stay short and swing your arms up like that, we're kind of losing a big power source. We're losing the power source of the body standing up and turning, which is going to launch that club through. But if you stay short, you're going you're gonna to replace the jump power with arms pulling through this way. And that's when the club misses the ball. Okay, so... Tall at setup. Tall into the finish. See how short that is? That's the only that's the only place I want it to go. I don't want it to go past there for now. Okay. Good. So the big power source that we have in our, in our golf swing is our ability to stand up really tall and almost jump. Okay. So getting into the finish position kind of slowly, is just going to make you speed up your arms. So try to feel like when you're getting into your finish that you're standing up against that wall aggressively. Yes. Taller, less knee bend. Good. Less. Stand up. There. Way better. Good for you. And I think that if you can feel like you can do that at a faster speed, not trying to speed up the club, not trying to speed up your arms, speeding up your body standing tall up against the wall, you're going to start to feel how your legs can get involved in the swing. But I know it's easy to look at a golf swing on video, like on TV, and watch these guys work their hands all the way around their body and think that, oh, they're just swinging their arms. But if you actually had their thought bubble, right, they're doing this. And the arms and the club are just following that motion. Okay, so we want to use our torso and our legs and everything from like ankles to armpits. And that's what's going to turn. But it's also when it turns, it gets taller. Then it gets lower and then it gets taller. So, you know, another idea is that the head has to stay still and level. No, it doesn't. Like all golfers move their head all the way around. People only started to say, keep your head still when the first guy put it on video, drew a circle around the guy's head and said, keep it in the box because it looks right, right? But Rory McIlroy's head goes down like three inches in his downs in his backswing, three more inches in his downswing, and then he goes up six inches. So he might start here and then goes down and then back up again, right? So we got to move around a whole bunch. And I think that for your feel, it's going to feel like you're taller, even more taller at the top of the swing and then as tall as you can get at the end. And the farther you can feel like you stay away from the ground today, the more you're going to use your arms to go down into the ground to reach the golf ball. Okay? So let's get comfortable with the grip, the tall setup, and the tall finish, and we'll work on the stuff in between throughout the next few hours. These pieces coming along. Um, good. I feel like I have the back together. Cool. Like, I feel like I'm not tall enough, yeah. They're totally both related. The more that your leg, the more you get rid of your knee bend into the shot, the less you'll want to lift the club up. There you go, good. Any luck? Okay.
Hey, that's cool. Yep. Okay, so hit another one and hold your finish. Freeze it up. Okay, hold it there. Now lose the bend in both knees. Stand tall. There, that's your finish. And you want to feel as though that the knees get long, like at the same time that the club hits the ball. Okay. Hey, really good. Okay, so one thing with the grip, try and put the hands closer together. There you go, yeah. Good. Hey, well done. Perfect. Okay, well done. So if we can find a sequence to feel as though that the legs get long before the club hits the ball and that you turn into the finish without lifting the club up, that's probably our next step. That's our evolution to this. So tall at impact and legs long, but arms down at the finish. And if you find that you finish with your arms up, just fix them, put them back down again. And then you'll kind of give your body an idea of where it is you're trying to go at the end and you'll eventually get there. There you go. I like it. Pretty good. So we're pretty steady with the draw. Always curving left to right. Okay, so like that's your pattern in your swing. We can get that ball to go higher by standing up sooner, right? Um, and the higher we hit it, the less it's gonna draw. But I don't wanna fix anything to fix a draw because it's not, like the draw happens a little bit because it's just too low, right? The high, the more we can stand up into the shot and get even like everything taller in the finish, yeah. the more that's going to add loft to the ball, to the driver and sends it up higher. They still want to go there. I know. Um, so like just some info on what the hands are supposed to do. Like the arms and hands kind of work just like chopping wood, right? They go up and down. And so if, I, if I'm trying to get all of my energy and speed into this club before it hits the ball, then my arms have to kind of speed up and then slow down before they get to the ball. Now the slowing down thing's kind of weird, but like the whole golf swing is a series of accelerators and decelerators. Like how we get power from say from deceleration would be like me sitting on the hood of your car, driving down the highway, I feel like a hundred kilometers an hour, but you hit the brakes to the car, the decel, I go flying. So having my arms speed themselves up through here, but then from here on in, they slow down. That's what speeds the club head up. That's me sitting on the hood of the car. So when I can slow my arms down at the ball, the club keeps going. 
the club accelerates, it actually gets faster and faster and faster. So if my feeling is that I slow my arms down while I stand up, that's what makes that club take off and see how low my finish is here, right? Because I'm not powering my club for too long. So another way for me to talk about this is that you can see that my hand goes up into the backswing and in the downswing, it goes down, across, and then back up again, right? Like it makes the letter U. But I only speed up on this vertical part of the U. I don't speed it up around the corner, just like you don't take the off ramp on the highway and step on the gas. You'll go through it. And that's kind of what we're seeing is that when you go from here and you speed up down and across this way, then since you're slowing things down here, it'll end up up here, right? So we want to try and feel like it's high and really hard down to here. And the rest of the motion from here is just standing up and it'll send the club that way. Okay. So the way that we get into a finished position that makes it look like, you know, the PGA Tour logo and every tour player that kind of finishes over here is because those guys stand up faster. And if I stand up, it's going to sling my arms up here but I don't want to feel like I drive my arms up there because the faster that I get my arms up that way, the more my body wants to sit down to brace for that. Okay. So we've got tall at setup and feeling as though that the arms don't go past the ball, but the body gets tall at the finish. And that's what makes that thing take off straighter, but higher. Our, our key is just going to be higher for now. And I think that if we can incorporate a couple practice swings in before each shot and just trying to feel like you do this as fast as you can, like you're trying to move the club as hard as you can via the stand up. Okay, faster. So I think another way for me to put this is how short of time can you make a swing? Can you make a swing in the shortest period of time? Because like when you take it up to the top, you kind of stop there a little bit. So everything stops at the top and then you go. And we need to try and find a way where your arms are still going up as your body's going forward. And, okay. Speed it up. One, two. Start, done. Start, 
finished. Not bad. Keep it going all the way through, all the way fast into the tall finish. Good, faster. With the body, get the body around and tall. Good, that was it. And the faster you can feel like you swing this, the more you're gonna line things up to hit it straighter. There is an idea out there that if you just learn things slow, then eventually you can speed it up, but it doesn't work that way. You know, I've seen lots of videos where it's like, you know, just kind of slowly trace the path of the club to get the feel of what it's like to be whatever you want at the bottom which is impossible when I then go to try to hit it fast, right? So build your swing based on speed first. Okay, and let's hit one. Decent, one more time. And so I think that you've got all the right pieces and the more you practice this at full speed, the more you'll start like super fast speed, if anything, the more you'll find the comfort and the, it'll show up faster. That's an easy way to say it. It's going to show up faster. Good. And so take it up to the top and get really tall at the top. I don't want you to get short on the way up, get tall on the way up. Yeah. And then from there you bounce down to get back up again. So Old school weight transfer talked about move to your left foot, then move to your right foot. New school weight transfer is move back and up, move down and forward, and then up again. So it's really like a, like a U, right? It goes back and up, down and up. And so since we've talked a lot about your height, I want you to really feel like you're, you're tall at setup. You get taller into the top of the backswing. You get shorter as you move forward, and then you get tall at the end. And obviously that up and down motion helps us get that jump into the finish. Good. Okay, let's hit one. Pretty good. So I'd say the big priority is going to feel that the lower body can stand up and you can keep pushing your arms down to the ground to finish lower. So if the handle, if the handle goes too high, we don't get the club to release, right? Like if you were cracking the towel and you pulled the handle all the way too far, it's never going to crack down at the bottom. Yeah, so elbows get long and knees get long.
that are One more time, do that again. Yep. Right, hold it here. Okay, so go through. Okay. And I don't want your arm, your club or your arms to get to here, but you're gonna stand nice and tall. Okay. Good, now you led with the body, way to go. And you kept this back. Okay. But I think that at times there's something in your idea of the hit, I'll just leave it at that, sure. that you're trying to bring the golf club to the ball using your hands. Yeah. And as a result of that throw down here to get it down there, it yeah. goes back up here. And I want this to get to the ball because you've gone this way. I see. Okay. So I used to do this thing. So set up to your shot, take yeah. it to the top. Okay, all the way up, keep going. So I used to tie an elastic band from here to here to this belt loop, right? And you had to try and find a way to keep that elastic stretched out by moving this all the way around the corner to the finish without rushing this to that knot. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like without that, the feeling is like my love handle here, right? Once I get to the top of my swing, I need my glove and my love handle to stay as far away from each other as they can. And that's gonna, that's what's pulling around the corner. Like if I could just take that left, right love handle and pull it back behind my heel, that's going to open me up. That's going to stand me up. And that's going to pull this thing around the corner. Yeah. Let's just say balance toe to heel. Sure. Like you might feel better balance on the toes. You might feel like balls of your feet. You might feel yeah. better balance behind it. Just balance toe to heel. That was different. Yes. Hey, way to go. Cool. Hit a ball like that. Just at that speed, that type of flow. Good. And so slowing down the tempo to find the right things sometimes is okay as long as it doesn't like become trying to master it at that slow tempo. It's like try it at slow. Okay, it felt good. Speed it up a little. Okay, it felt good. And find the way. Find where it doesn't feel right. But I think you've got all the right pieces to this.